Let's take a look at section 4.3, which is about direct proof and counterexample, with a focus on divisibility. So, as with 4.1 and 4.2, what I'd like to do in this video is go through the key definition that you're going to see come up in various proofs in this section. I'll include a couple of examples, and I want to briefly touch on the unique factorization theorem, which is also part of this section. So the definition that is the, the main focus of this section is that if n and d are integers with d not equal to 0, then n is divisible by d if and only if n equals d times some integer. Now, there's notation that we use around this, which is d divides n with the divides being represented by this vertical line. Now, be careful with that notation. That is not saying d divided by n. That's not a fraction there. So be careful. That that notation where you've got d with that vertical line and then n is really a statement by itself because it's saying that d divides n. So it's describing a relationship between those two integers. So another way to, to state this definition is that d divides n if and only if there exists an integer k such that n equals d times k. Okay, now one of the key uh, ideas that's mentioned along with this theorem is that there's a variety of terms that we use to describe the same relationship between these two integers. Okay, so it's important to be familiar with this vocabulary because you're going to see in different problems they use different terminology, but it's all synonymous. So instead of saying n is divisible by d, you could say n is a multiple of d. You could say d is a factor of n. You could say d is a divisor of n. Or you could say d divides n, or use that notation we were just discussing. So all of these things you will see come up in various exercises in section 4.3. And so you should understand that those are all equivalent ways of saying the same thing. Um, these are not words that are probably brand new to you, right? You've heard of divisor and factor and multiple. But the focus on using the definition in terms of our proofs and our justifications, uh, we, we want to always be focused on using the definition. Um, and you're going to see some examples here in just a moment. So we can say 8 divides 56 because 56 equals 8 times 7. So notice in that justification I'm going right to the definition and I'm saying well the definition says that you know for 8 to divide 56 means that there's an integer such that 56 equals 8 times that integer. Five divides zero. Now this is a little bit of a trickier one because we all know whenever we talk about division and zero, we need to be careful because uh, division by zero is undefined. But this is not saying five divided by zero. The question is whether five divides zero. And if we look at that definition of divisibility, what it would mean to divide zero is that 0 is 5 times an integer. 
And there's nothing that says that integer k can't be 0. So 5 does divide 0 because 0 equals 5 times 0. Okay, one thing you're going to notice in this section is that sometimes when we talk about divides or divisibility, we will be looking at expressions involving variables. So if a and b are integers, a squared minus b squared is a multiple of a plus b because we can factor a squared minus b squared as a plus b times a minus b. And a minus b is an integer because differences of integers are integers. Now I want to point out, it's important there to note that a minus b is an integer because that in that built into that definition of divisibility, again, that k has to be an integer. So it's not just enough to say that n equals d times some real number. No, that's not what the definition of divisibility is telling us. It has to be n equals d times an integer. So it's important here that we emphasize that a minus b is an integer. Okay, now let's briefly discuss this uh, unique factorization of the integers. If you took 120 and broke that down into prime factors, okay, maybe using a factor tree might be a way that you learn to do this. 120 is 2 to the third power times 3 times 5. The unique factorization of the integers tells us that's the only way that 120 factors into integer, uh, into prime uh, factors up to reordering. So of course we can change the order around, but if we want to break that down into prime factors, the only prime factors we get are 2, 3, and 5, and 2 uh, occurs 3 times as a factor. Okay, um, so 2 to the third times 3 times 5. So unique factorization of the integers is something discussed in the section. It's saying that, you know, anytime you want to break down into prime factors, you're, there's only going to be one way to do that um, for any particular integer. And we'll see in the homework how that works into various types of examples. The next section also is direct proof and counterexample. This is direct proof and counterexample four. Uh, and it discusses a technique of proof writing called division into cases, something that's very important um, for certain kinds of proofs. Uh, and it also looks at the topic of the quotient remainder theorem, which is going to be the subject around which many of the proofs in that section are focused. Uh, I hope you found this video helpful. See you in the next video.